Hi, I'm Jen, and today we're going to talk about sweet substitutes, particularly for desserts. How to have a healthy dessert, walk away feeling satisfied, and not having gained a ton of calories in your regimen. So we'll talk about a couple things that we can use for bases, for sweeteners, for protein substitutes, and for kind of that crunchy texture that we all like to have in our desserts. So. A lot of us make the mistake of overdoing it on dessert, overdoing it on sweet things. And one of the reasons is most of the sweet items that we find out there, whether they're a baked good from our home, something we find in the grocery store, something we get at a restaurant, is the main ingredient is carbohydrate and sugar. And that's a problem because your insulin gets spiked. Your hunger levels actually get spiked after you've finished a meal. And before you know it, you keep going and going and going for it, having overdone it on dessert and still not feeling satisfied. So what are some things that we can put together at home that'll be calorie controlled, low fat, low carbohydrate, and full of nutrition, full of nutrients that we can actually feel sustained? That's really important. When you guys are going for a dessert, I think um, priority should be what's gonna sustain you? What's gonna feel good after one or two bites, even three or four, so you can walk away feeling good and you're not left with a sugar high and excess calories. So some of the best things to use would be things that have protein. Protein is really important because protein keeps you full. Protein actually anchors carbohydrates that you eat within a meal or within a dessert so that the sugar gets pulsed out into your bloodstream in a much slower manner so you don't get a really quick rush and then a drop. And that's actually what keeps you craving is when your sugar gets spiked and then it plummets, you want more and more and more. And that can happen in instance. So some great substitutes for your base, which you want to be protein based, uh, would be a plain yogurt. We have non-fat plain here. This is Altadena. It's unsweetened, unflavored. That's what you want to go for. The sweetened stuff has way too much sugar in it. It's going to outweigh the protein, your initial uh, purpose for using the yogurt anyway. So you can sweeten it with some other things that we'll talk about down the line. But yogurt is a really good base. It's thick, it's creamy, it's protein based, it's going to keep you full, it's not going to spike your sugar level. And plain yogurt's going to be a little bit bitter, but we'll talk about what to mix into it to make it taste a lot better. So yogurt's a great one. Yogurt is not only a good base for um, a ready made, kind of at home, quick throw together dessert, but it's a really good substitute for oil in baked goods. Applesauce can actually work the same way. So if you have half a cup of oil called in a recipe, you can actually use half a cup of plain yogurt. Um, then we also have a fat-free cream cheese here. Cream cheese gets, you can whip it, it gets that kind of airy, um, but still creamy and light flavor. So you can mix in a sweetener into a cream cheese to get something creamy. You can melt it, you can mix it with chocolate, kind of drizzle it over strawberries, which is really good. Another one of my favorite bases for desserts and substitutes in baking is ricotta cheese. This is a low-fat one. You can use non-fat, you can use a whole milk, but the calories are gonna be higher. Um, I think low fat is a really nice happy medium. A little bit of fat actually keeps you full the same way protein will. So this is again, protein based for just a quarter cup. We have six grams of protein, which outweighs the amount of sugar, which is four grams. So this is what we're looking for in our bases. Again, it's yogurt, plain yogurt, low fat cream cheese or non fat cream cheese, a low fat ricotta or non fat ricotta will do. They mix really well with other things. They can get creamy. You can whip them and they're instant. You don't have to cook them. They're all ready to eat. Um, another good base, and generally this base is good when it's mixed in with something else, gives a lot of flavor, especially in the fall and winter, you'll see pumpkin, and, and canned pumpkin is, is available all year round. You don't have to wait until it's Halloween time or harvest time. So this is actually a really good substitute. A little bit of sweetener goes a long way in pumpkin, brings out the natural sweetness. This is low carbohydrate also for one serving, it has 10 carbs. Four of those carbs are fiber, so that's gonna keep you really full. That's gonna keep you from craving more and more and more. It's low calorie. For half a cup, it's 50 calories, so it's a good mixer, and it's also a good flavoring. Um, so now we'll go on to, and we'll talk about the almond milk in a minute, but we're gonna go on to what do you mix in? How do you kind of bring these flavors to life? How do you take the bitterness out of the yogurt? How do you make the flavor, you know, how do you make the cheese taste like anything, not like cheese in a dessert, right? So another thing that's sort of along the lines of that fall and harvest is pumpkin spice. Goes really well with the pumpkin. And this is non-caloric, there's nothing in it. It's actually um, really high in antioxidants like cinnamon would be. So it's a mixture of cinnamon, nutmeg, cloves, lemon peel, and cardamom. So it's gonna give it more of a potent kind of smoky, spicy flavor. And again, you're still gonna need to sweeten your item, but this will be good to add flavor. Really good with the ricotta and the pumpkin. These three together are really nice. And then you can add in a sweetener. Um, we have Truvia, 
we have Z Sweet and we have a liquid stevia here. This one happens to be chocolate and this sweet leaf is actually sold in many different flavors anywhere from um, there's a vanilla cream, there's an apricot if you like a fruity flavor and um, we'll start with the stevia. Stevia is a natural sweetener um, and it's better than sugar which is also a natural sweetener because it doesn't spike your insulin and that's what we're looking for. We're looking for things that are going to keep us satisfied and also taste really good and not be calorically too high um, to use in a dessert. We have to use a lot of it to make, you have to use a lot of sugar to make things sweet. So by the time you're done adding teaspoon by teaspoon, you have something that's way too high in sugar and not even all that satisfying. So stevia is a really good substitute. Again, it's natural, it comes from a leaf. It's high in fiber and just one drop will sweeten an entire eight ounces of water, eight ounces of almond milk. In this mixture, if this were a vanilla stevia, this is one of my favorite blends. To take about half a cup of the low fat ricotta, half a cup of pumpkin, you can just mix them together. They mix really easily. You can put them in a blender, add a couple drops of lemon, or sorry, either lemon stevia or vanilla stevia or even lemon juice, a little bit of the um, pumpkin spice and that's a really nice kind of creamy dessert. If you want something crunchy, we'll talk about the crunchy things you can put on top of it later. But other sweeteners you can use if you're not a stevia fan, you can use Truvia. And Truvia also has stevia in it. The difference is it contains erythritol. And erythritol, anything that ends in an OL, most things that end in an OL are a sugar alcohol. It's not alcohol. It's just the portion of the sugar molecule that doesn't get digested in the body. So it's more like a fiber. So it actually sweeps through the body and clings through toxins and can actually um, be a little bit cleansing. If you use too much of it, you're going to get a laxative effect, which is the only danger in things like this. People go overboard. But if you use just a small amount that's needed, because like I said, one drop of stevia can sweeten an entire eight ounces of water. So just a little bit of Truvia goes a long way. The base of it is stevia and then a little bit of the erythritol, which is a sweetener as well. Non-caloric, zero calories in here and very, very sweet. So kind of limit your amount at first, see how much it takes you. And then you can use a couple packets and that's non-neurotoxic like sweeteners um, such as aspartame or equal or Splenda would be. So these are perfectly safe, sold at Whole Foods. You can find them over the counter. And um, the last one would be Z-Sweet. And Z-Sweet is the same thing. It's just different ratios. It's actually also made with erythritol and stevia. Um, and it's just different ratios, the Truvia versus the Z-Suite. So depending on what you like better, they're all good to try. So these are sold in packets and in bigger forms, like a, a giant bag that you can bake with. These are great baking. Um, they substitute sugar, just cane sugar, molasses, maple syrup, honey, cup by cup measure. So you don't have to modify anything. And these are nice, the little packets are nice to keep in your purse, to keep in your car, if you want to sweeten coffee, if you're getting something on the go, that's really good. So. We have a nice little mixture here. This would be our first one, kind of a, just an example of what a dessert can be. And it just takes one little packet to sweeten half a cup to a cup. So let's see now, other things that you can use, um, cocoa powder. So this is just plain cocoa powder. It doesn't really matter what brand it is. You can get an organic one, which is nice. Um, you want it to be unsweetened though. You'll see cocoa powder everywhere. There's Hershey's, there's Nestle. Um, this one happens to be Kroger. It's just unsweetened for one tablespoon, which remember, tablespoon is kind of small. So a tablespoon is this size, okay? We're not looking at a lot, right? So for one tablespoon, we get three grams of carbohydrate, no sugar, and 20 calories. And this is really potent. Cocoa's pretty bitter, but does have that chocolatey flavor. Mixed in with something like a ricotta, which has a little bit of sweetness, you're gonna get a really nice flavor. And then if you drop in a little chocolate stevia, that's also a good mix, kind of like a little chocolate pudding. And by the time you're done with that mixture, if we put these three together, so we've got these three here, let's look at the calories in a one cup serving. It would be 100 from here and 20 from here and zero from the stevia. You have 120 calorie dessert for almost nothing. You can add a little espresso to that. It's just pure espresso powder. A little pinch will go a really long way. Espresso is really bitter, um, but has a really robust flavor. A little pinch of this will go a long way with the cocoa. And then you can add little chocolate chips, a tablespoon of this. These are mini chips. Again, easier to sprinkle and they gain a lot um, more over a small surface area because you get a little chip in each bite, which is nice. So one tablespoon, again, this much is gonna give you 70 calories. So just a sprinkle is what you want. And at the end of it, you have still less than 200 calories in your dessert. 
You can also shave a pure cocoa bar. So this is 60% cocoa, more bittersweet. Anything above 60 is good. Generally 70 is the best. The higher the cocoa content in your chocolate, the lower the sugar, sometimes the higher the fiber. This bar actually has over 10 grams of fiber in it, which is nice. You won't find that in milk chocolate. So dark is always better. And you can break this up, you can chop it up, you can shave it, you can throw it in a blender. It acts as a really good kind of, again, crunchy topping. Other crunchy toppings, you can use a granola. This is bare naked, actually says it's peak protein, so it's supposed to have a little more protein in it. Again, we want protein to keep us full, keep us satiated. So just one quarter cup of this, and to remind you that a quarter cup is this big, tiny. One quarter cup is 140 calories. And we want most of these desserts to be around 140, 150 or below. So we don't wanna use a total, a total of a quarter cup. Just a small amount is gonna go a really long way with stuff like this. So I would use about a tablespoon. You're gonna get that nice crunchiness. You'll get a little protein. You'll get a little bit of fat to hold you over and some fiber. So this is a really good mix. My favorite crunchy addition. These are Susan's cookies. They're found at Whole Foods and they're sugar-free. So there's a little bit of that maltitol in it, which is that OL ending, that sugar alcohol that we were talking about, erythritol, xylitol, maltitol. These cookies are baked with something similar to our Truvia and our Z-Sweet, which can contain those sugar alcohols. So the sugar alcohol acts as a fiber. It's gonna keep you fuller for longer, and it's going to have zero impact on your insulin. So these are a chocolate flavor. There's eight carbs per one cookie, 50 calories per one cookie, and they're pretty large and dense. If you crush this up in a plastic bag, just throw it in a Ziploc. You can just pound it with something and make little crunchies out of it. A very little bit goes a really long way. So this is a really nice addition. You can do this on top of yogurt with a little bit of cinnamon, maybe a little bit of chocolate. You can even add a tablespoon of chopped nuts. This is really nice. Um, the entire bag here, this is really small. So there are eight tablespoons in the whole bag. Gets reduced to nothing. We can all finish this in one sitting, most of us. So go skimpy on the nuts. If you just take this little guy here and you dip it into this, you can make sure that you don't overdo it. That's gonna be 45 calories to sprinkle on top of your dessert. So then, last thing that we didn't talk about, we have almond milk. So another great trick is to use almond milk, um, not only in recipes, but on its own. Almond milk is one of those things that if you do it the right way, you mix it with the right things, it can make you feel like you've had a really nice dessert when you haven't really actually eaten anything. And we have to remember we do get calories from liquid. We don't wanna drink our calories, but in this case, if you just finished dinner, you want something sweet, you don't wanna actually eat anything, put anything together, you can take a cup of almond milk, you can steam it in the microwave, steam it on the stove top, even scalding it's gonna bring out a little bit of its sweetness. And just a drop of chocolate stevia or two drops of chocolate stevia or even the vanilla one will make a really nice cup of cocoa almost. You can simulate like a hot chocolate. Um, you can mix in a little bit of the pumpkin spice and a little, a spoon of cinnamon will, I'm sorry, a spoon of pumpkin will dissolve in there and make a nice kind of nutmeggy um, kind of winter or fall, sort of like an eggnog-ish kind of drink. That's really nice. So you've got a hot beverage that you're sipping on and you're slowly feeling a little bit more full. You're getting that sweetness and you're not gorging on anything. It's a really nice trick. So the almond milk, um, again, heated is gonna be best. And it's actually nice uh, to have, this has a cold beverage too, alongside some of your desserts instead of a glass of milk. And the reason why we'd wanna use this instead of lactose milk or cow's milk is because per one cup, um, the almond milk has about a third of the calories. So it's 35 calories for one whole cup. Imagine a tall glass. We have 35 calories, two and a half grams of fat, one carbohydrate, zero sugar. So unlike regular milk, which is gonna have 13 grams of sugar, um, if it's whole milk, it's gonna have more than eight grams of fat, low fat milk, maybe five or three grams. Um, we're getting just enough fat to hold us over. We're not getting any sugar to spike our insulin and the calories are really low. So if you finish your first glass, you want another one, you can go for it. Actually, this is really nice too. J. Rob in the almond milk. This is a vanilla flavor. This is whey protein. And again, we wanna use protein to keep us full. Protein's gonna anchor insulin. We're not gonna go crazy on dessert if it has enough protein. It'll actually be good for someone who's working out a lot because you need extra protein. So J. Rob, this tastes very, very sweet vanilla. 
It's actually made with the sweetener in here is stevia. So they already, it's uh, pre-sweetened protein powder. So this, and a you know, spoon of this in your almond milk, um, a spoon of this mixed with pumpkin, a spoon of this even just in your yogurt can make everything sweeter and you get that little bit of satisfaction after dinner or after lunch or whenever you prefer dessert. So that's a really nice addition too. So as you can see, you don't have to have a piece of chocolate cake to feel satisfied after dinner. You don't have to go through a box of cookies. You can put together some really simple items if you're stocked with the right things in your kitchen. It can be really simple, really fast, low calorie, and tastes really good. So basically any of these combinations, kind of puzzle piece them around, trade them around, and have fun, and you really can't go wrong.